Hello everyone, I invite you to join me today in praying for victims and survivors of abuse. In my ministry as a bishop, I've met with many survivors and I've heard from them how abuse hurt them and violated them. In many cases, it devastated their lives, their relationships, their families, and caused them immense spiritual, emotional, and physical harm. Abuse can break your heart and destroy your spirit. In many cases, people only came forward to talk about their abuse many years later. And some have spoken about their devastation, that whenever they did come forward to the church, there were failures to listen to them, to take them seriously, or to stop their abuser harming others. No wonder so many people who have been abused find it very difficult to forgive or to trust the church anymore. They need to hear from church leaders like me that we realise the harm that has been done to them, that we're sorry for that, and we want to make atonement. And I repeat that to them today. I'm sorry for what happened to you. I'm sorry for the terrible failures and crimes that happened in your church. And I want to do my best to ensure that no one else suffers the way that you did. One of the things that survivors say to me again and again is that the church needs to have proper procedures in place for safeguarding. And I'm very grateful today for the many, many people in our parishes who are working hard to ensure that any activities related to the church are safe for children and for other vulnerable people. I want to say thanks to our safeguarding teams today and acknowledge the great work that they are doing that ensuring that we have best practice in place and also monitoring our practice, keeping it up to date and making sure that we are all accountable. It's also extremely important that in every single case of abuse allegation that we promptly report it to the statutory authorities and we cooperate fully with them. And that's something that we do here and something that I want to continue always. It might seem surprising, but many survivors who speak to me ask for my prayers and for prayers within the church. So I think it's very important that in our liturgies, in our prayers of the faithful, from time to time, we remember victims of abuse, both within the church and in society in general. I think it's important to realise that these dear members of our church are part of the body of Christ. They are today and they always have been. And therefore, whenever we pray for those who've been abused, we're letting them know that they are important to us. Their well-being today and in the future is important to us as church. A few years ago, a victim of abuse came to me and she had composed a prayer and she asked that this prayer would be said in all of our churches often and that in each of our churches there would be a candle of atonement so that we could light that candle and pray often and bring to our remembrance victims and survivors of abuse. I'm going to pray that prayer for you today and invite you to keep this intention in your daily prayers always. So let us pray. Lord, forgive us our many sins. We grieve and repent with all our hearts for having offended you, for our great failings and neglect of the young and vulnerable. We place all of those who have been hurt by the church in any way into your loving hands and under the protection of our Blessed Mother. Lord, bring peace to their broken lives and show us all the way out of darkness and into the light of your word. May we, as the people of God, be more fully human, 
more fully Christ-like and more fully your people, that we may see the errors of the past and go forward with renewed hope and faith in Christ and in our church. Amen. Thank you very much indeed for listening.